Today, we'll be telling you about our cross-linguistic database for the combinatorial and semantic properties of attitude predicates. Attitude predicates are uh, verbs and adjectives that have the property of combining with sentential constituents. So these are verbs like know, believe, hope, and so forth. And a longstanding observation in the literature has been that these predicates are picky as the kinds of clauses that they combine with or they select. Uh, one difference uh, lies along the lines of declaratives versus interrogative selection. Uh, verbs like know, remember, forget, and so forth are compatible both with declarative and with interrogative complements, whereas verbs like uh, L, you know, believes, hopes, thinks, and so forth are compatible with declaratives but incompatible with interrogative uh, complements. Another kind of division concerns verbs like be surprised, where uh, these verbs are generally happy with uh, well, questions, um, but they this prefer combining with uh, polar or alternative questions. So this is in 2B, and uh, I'm surprised whether they serve soup for breakfast is ungrammatical, um, even though surprise uh, can combine with constituent questions. Uh, and what's been proposed in the literature is that these kinds of patterns uh, can be explained by appealing to the semantic properties of these uh, attitude predicates. So properties like factivity will explain declarative and interrogative selection, emotive factivity will explain the inability to combine with weather complements and so forth. Now, these generalizations have exceptions. So for example, believe, which we earlier uh, saw couldn't embed questions is in fact uh, perfectly happy in constructions like I can't believe who came to the party and similar for other uh, verbs. And these generalizations or these patterns have mostly only been studied on the basis of English data. And in order to address these kinds of uh, sort of questions or issues, we uh, constructed and present a database that references the semantic and the combinatorial properties of approximately 50 predicates in 16 languages. Uh, this database contains machine-readable data in a table format, as well as uh, notes uh, provided by our language consultants about the finer-grained aspects of these uh, constructions. And uh, this database will allow, we hope, the assessment of existing generalizations about attitude constructions, the formulations of new generalizations, uh, and uh, we will be able to do so in a cross-linguistically informed way. Now, some of the a sample a, a sample of the semantic properties that we included in our database uh, is illustrated on this slide. We included things like verticality. This is the property for an attitude verb to entail its declarative or entail or imply its uh, declarative complement. So, for example, Alice is surprised that it's raining implies that it's raining whereas Alice thinks that it's raining, does not uh, imply that it's raining. Uh, one can ask about projection from under the scope of negation. So Alice isn't surprised that it's raining, also implies that it's raining. And one property that will become important later in the talk is uh, the property of being Q to P, so question to proposition distributive. And this is the property that if you have a, a sentence like Alice is surprised who was at the party with a question complement, the sentence entails there is an individual X such that Alice is surprised that X was at the party. In a sense, we're sort of replacing the question complement with a weaker declarative one. Uh, this table lists the full set of semantic properties that we included in our database. You feel free to pause at the stage and stare at it. Um, and in, in addition to these semantic properties, we also included combinatorial properties of attitude verbs and these are some of them are illustrated on this slide. So the ability to combine with finite declaratives, these are that clauses, that it's raining, non-finite declaratives, wants it to rain, finite polar interrogatives, know whether it's raining, and so forth. And we will use in this talk weather interrogative as a cover term for both polar and alternative interrogatives. Uh, here is a fuller list of the set of combinatorial properties that we included. So two things to note about these uh, properties. Uh, about the response options, uh, we the consultants had the option of saying uh, that a sentence was fully acceptable or completely unacceptable, as well as uh, intermediate uh, options uh, that reference the markedness of a particular sentence. They were also they could also tell us 
okay, so this predicate can embed questions provided that you use a preposition to introduce the question. Those kinds of things were recorded in the text documents. The second thing to note is that uh, these, uh, the, this particular way of uh, carving up the, the landscape of embedded clauses might differ from language to language. So some languages might make fewer or uh, additional clause type distinctions. And this was also uh, referenced in our data set. Okay, so about the methods of data collection. Um, so we started with 48 English predicates uh, and these predicates were chosen from various semantic classes uh, as follows. And then we recruited uh, native speakers of 16 languages from different families, one uh, speaker per language. And then there are also two additional languages where the data collection is ongoing. Um, and then in terms of the procedure, so first the consultants uh, translated English predicates into their, their own language. And in cases where there are no direct translations, they were encouraged to consider predicates with similar meanings. And then after the list of predicates have been determined, um, they annotated the predicate's semantic and combinatorial properties using a questionnaire and predicate specific notes that we designed. Um, you can access from the following link. Uh, and then so, in general, so each consultant would spend uh, 60 to 100 hours and they would meet regularly with at least one of us during the process to clarify difficult judgments or resolve possible complications. Uh, and then some of the discussions will be reflected in a text document. Um, so basically the result of this data collection uh, will be this database. Um, so where each language has a folder that contains three things, a readme file that contains language specific information, such as the list of semantic and combinatorial properties, or some language specific distinctions, such as mood or complementizer types. And then there will also be a table, which is a wide format CSV, as well as a text document containing the relevant linguistic examples and discussions. And the database can be accessed um, from the link below. And here is just as an example of the database. So the table and the text document for the Dutch database. Um, and then just to present a case study for uh, of how one might use this database to uh, assess generalizations cross-linguistically. So here is a generalization proposed in the literature according to which emotive factors are incompatible with polar and alternative questions. Um, so in, before we can evaluate this generalization cross-linguistically, we need to first determine what, what counts as an emotive factor predicate. So there's no uh, exact consensus in the literature, but we, uh, this is the oper operationalization we adopted. So a predicate is an emotive factor uh, if it has the following properties. Okay, and then some examples would include um, be happy or be surprised. Um, and using this, our, our database, so we found that there is a systematic counterexample cross-linguistically, which is uh, basically the predicates of relevance, such as care in English, and it's like translational equivalence. Um, so this predicate is characterized by the lack of Q2P distributivity. So for example, Alice cares which player won the race does not entail that there's a person such that Alice cares that that particular person won the race. And, uh, and then also, yeah, so we can, as we can see, so. So such predicates of relevance indeed can take a polar questions. And this suggests a refined cross-linguistic generalization where um, basically we restrict our attention to emotive factors that are Q2P distributive. And as far as we can tell from our database, um, the refined cross-linguistic generalization seems pretty uh, robust. So these such emotive factive predicates are indeed incompatible with polar or alternative questions. Um, so, but this is just a case study showing how the database might help assess and refine cross-linguistic generalizations. Um, and then to conclude, so we presented a database uh, that complements existing resources um, in the following way. So it allows for cross-linguistic comparison and also within subject comparison across different properties. And also it allows us to assess and explore across linguistic generalizations. And in particular, it can also allow for fine-grained qualitative investigation based on the uh, accompanying text documents. Uh, we also acknowledge some limitations of the current database, such as low numbers of languages, consultants, and predicates, and also the limited diversity of language families. 
and also the translation-based procedure might, uh, might result in losing certain interesting predicates. But I, we stress that these are uh, not necessarily, um, so nothing prevents us from uh, further investigation to um, resolve such limitations. And we very much welcome um, further contribution and collaboration. Um, and finally, we thank our consultants, collaborators, and our funders. Thank you very much.